His name was Wang Chin Fu. He was a journalist, a showman, a provocateur. He wanted more than a new immigration law, more even than equal rights. For him, it was also personal. He wanted respect. He was the master of what we now know as the soundbite. Chinese, don't eat rats. I will pay someone $500 if they can prove that Chinese eat rats. Where he came from or why is a mystery. But by 1880, he was lecturing any U.S. audience he could find. Confucius, he said, lived 500 years before Jesus, who was a Johnny-come-lately. Assimilation? You try it, he said. Anybody here want to become Chinese? He meant to shock, as when he gave his newspaper its name. He actually put the word Chinese American onto his newspaper, you know, like a banner, and it's like claiming, you know, America for himself. And in the process, I think claiming America for the rest of the, of, of the Chinese American community. More visionary than businessman, he printed 8,000 copies of his paper for a New York Chinese population of under a thousand. In less than a year, his venture was dead. But he wouldn't quit. In 1883, that great baiter of the Chinese, their arch enemy, Dennis Kearney, was touring the East. Wang Chin Fu put himself out there to be the target. And so he challenged Dennis Kearney to a duel. You know, let's fight it out in the street, you and me, mano a mano. Of course, newspapers couldn't resist. What weapons, reporters wanted to know. Kearney's choice, Wong shot back. I give him the choice of chopsticks, Irish potatoes, or guns. I'm not to be deterred from this work by the vaporings of Chin Fu, Akun, Hung Fat, Fi Fong, or any other of Asia's almond-eyed lepers. Wong showed up at a rally. A crowd of white men drinking and cheering. Plus, Wong Chin Fu heckling from a front row. And uh, Dennis Kearney dismissed him. But he made his point. You saw his statement to Dennis Kearney in all the newspapers of the day. Then, Wong showed up in Chicago, agitating for the right to vote. We want Illinois, the place that Lincoln called home, to do for the Chinese what the North did for the Negroes. But how do you change laws when you don't have votes, or money, or allies among whites? That was a problem no showmanship or eloquence could solve. In the 1890s, Wang Chin Fu vanished as suddenly as he'd appeared, leaving no record even of where or when he died. 